Okay, welcome everybody to Coffee and Art in the Afternoon. I got tricker headed. I mean, ask politely, <coughs> Eileen, um, <laughs> to stream this afternoon after Carrie. So I was just showing, and again, now I've already got a whole show on color books, so I'm not going to get too in depth. I'm just going to do a couple little test things. But I was just showing that if you get, like, this is Creative Haven brand from Hobby Lobby, they're normally $5.99. Well, with a 40% off coupon, and Hobby Lobby does take their 40% coupons on books, whereas Michael's does not. But I, I specifically bought this one because it's, for one, it's just one-sided, and there's all kinds of animals, flowers, bees, bugs, fish, birds, all kind of things that you can cut out, like I did this page. These are a whole page of clownfish in coral. Now, I just threw away the coral I didn't want, but I colored all these little clownfish and then fussy cut them out. And then uh, I got a new, um, this is just one of those, um, what brand is it here? Get the cover off. Royal Lang Nickel Sketchbook. It was the, all the sketchbooks at Hobby Lobby are 40% off. I guess through today. I guess it's been going on all week, and today was the first day I got over there this week. Um, and so anyway, I got two new uh, books. This is probably about, what did I say it was? Uh, eight and a half by 11. And then this one right here is a nine by 12. And it's just sketch paper. It's nothing, you know, it's nothing fancy. But the thing I was one needed to try with this one was to use it as an art journal using different things that I cut out from the color books. Because we love our color books, but they're just going to sit in the color book. So at the very least, I thought, you know, I'd find the pages that I, like, here's a whole page of bugs. After you color it, well, it doesn't have to be after. I just, I like to actually color in the book. Okay, uh, now if it's double-sided... This, like these are, and you want to use markers or something that's going to soak through, then you might want to copy it before you um, colored it. Uh, or if you're just going to use color pencils, like mostly what I do, where's that page with the food I started, um, like this, then you could copy it and then cut fussy cut it out and use it in your art journal rather than just having it sit in your sit in your color book you could use some of the items that you color and you know and cut them out and that's what i did here these little clownfish i don't know if you can see them very well but um, I cut these little clownfish out. Let me put them on here, and then I'll hold them up under. And a little bit of the coral. The rest of the, the whole background was coral. And I did some with green coral, some with blue coral, just to play with some different color ideas here. And then I fussy cut all the little clownfish out. And now you can use them in an art journal page or whatever kind of thing, you, you know, glue book or whatever. So it's, you know, it's just another way to use the little things that you've colored in your art journal or whatever. So, hey Marie, anybody else I miss? Let me get a sip of coffee here. Thanks everybody for stopping in. So any questions on that or anything? That's pretty self-explanatory. Just using the little things that, you know, because you've colored them and you want, you know, they're so cute. You want to you want to use them in something. At least I do, you know. And then this is another one that I got from uh, Hobby Lobby. Again, it was five ninety nine. I used a forty percent off coupon, and it's a steampunk one. And uh, here's the page that I showed as an example. On I do have a recording called Color Books and Clip Art, or something like that, and how you can use your color books and clip art in other projects. Okay, so here I showed how. This was, uh, was this some, well, I forgot even what I used. Okay, this was a marker, a water-based marker, one of the Crayola kit, you know, super tip ones, um, bullet tip type markers, just the water-based Crayola ones. I used that as a background, then I went over it with some color pencils. So you can see the marker went through. Now, it doesn't matter if it goes through. I, I just put a 
blank sheet, you know, behind it to make sure it doesn't get on here. Or you can just tear it out, you know, depending on what you want to do with it. If you want to color the whole book, just make sure you put a sheet behind the where you're using markers. Because if it's just one-sided, it doesn't matter if it goes through. You know, it, it doesn't matter. And then this one I used, uh, let's see, this was, one was Neo Color and one was just the kids' uh, watercolors like this. Um, you know, this type of thing as a base. And then I went in with color pencil to do the shading on top of it. So, okay, so that's that. And again, this is just that Creative Haven brand. They're at Hobby Lobby, and they're, they're, all their color books like this are on an end cap. Like all the way, when you walk in the store, it's like all the way to the back of the store where there's some books like on one side or the other, depending on which side your Hobby Lobby has their section of uh, books in. But it's on the back side on an end cap is where they are stocking these. Stocking. <laughs> Stock, stocking. Like where they put them. <laughs> So, okay. All right, so there's that. Then there's just all different kinds. You know, this was the Animal Kingdom one. Again, this one is double-sided. So you don't want to use markers where it will go through. But if you want to just, you know, you could either color it in the book and then copy it and cut that out, you know, or or just copy it and color it on a... On a uh, Print it, you know, cardstock or whatever you want to print it out on to use in your art journal. Okay, but it will. This one's a little thicker, but I still wouldn't trust markers to not go through. Yes, yeah, stocking the stocking magazines. <laughs> I I wouldn't trust it not to go through with. Um, but look at all those awesome fish. You know, to color, cut out, and use in an art journal. Now, you know, I'm sure there's copyrighted things. You can't be, you know, copying these things and, you know, I mean, if you're just going to use it in your own art journal, which is what I'm talking about, just using it in your own art journal. But, um, yeah, you don't want to be out, you know, oh, look, you know, look at all these snakes I drew or trees or whatever. Not that any of us would do that, but, you know, so... <laughs> Girl. But anyway, this is an awesome one right here. This Animal Kingdom one. And again, I've shown, I did more in depth on that last video. This is one that I got at Barnes & Noble for $6.98. This is one where they have stacks and stacks and stacks, right Eileen? Stacks and stacks of color books. At, uh, and, uh, and Jeannie's can rest assured, she's already seen all these books, except the one that I just showed that I bought today. You've already seen all these genies, so. <laughs> hey, Molly. Uh, so anyway, this is, uh, they have all kinds of these for six ninety eight. And look, this is a big, thick book. I mean, with tons of awesome things to color. Uh, you know, when they get into $20, it's going to have to be something really, really awesome like this Celtic design one for me to pay 20 bucks. And this is because it's a hardback. And the pages are, you know, uh, they're not, they're thicker than printer paper, okay? And the, and I just love the intricacy of Celtic knots. So I, you know, I was willing to pay $20 for this. But I wasn't willing to pay $20, $22 for the flow one. Because I have all these other ones. Now, if I didn't have any of these, you know, I, I might have. Yeah, they have stacks of these, don't they, 3G? And they're awesome. And again, look, if you just wanted to color, look at all those little trees. Color those, and you can cut them out like I did these little fish, and use them in your art journaling. You know? So, look, jars of plants. Just, you know, they're just awesome to use, uh you know, for your own personal, and you know, that's kind of, that's like clip art. Clip art books are made for you to use for your own, you know, whatever. Okay, and then this one is another one that um, Colleen 
with one L has, I think she has every one of these. The 20 ways to draw a tree, a flower, a bird, and anyway. But it's not just a tree. When they have like 20 ways to draw a tree and 44 other nifty things from nature. See, there's other things in all these books. But these are great for design ideas. If you have an art journal and you want to draw some birds or trees or acorns or leaves or snails, then these bugs, there's bugs, then these are awesome to use for inspiration to put in your art journals. Because it's, you know, I, we all love our collage, but it's also, you know, good to practice your drawing. And these kind of things, you know, you just draw hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of things, you're going to get better at drawing, even if it's just a leaf or a tree. You know, your hand-eye coordination is going to improve just by, you know, doing that. So, again, you know, the secret Paris, I think there's a secret New York, and I think some other ones coming out, too. But, uh, again, I showed all these in much more detail on the uh, color color book show I did a while back and I don't when I'm doing this I might just want to color a shoe here you know a perfume bottle here <laughs> you know some uh, art supply or yarn things on this one well, sewing sewing things here I just skip around you know I color a couple teapots and uh, we actually used to have this porcelain I forget, it's a corning wear that's the corn flower design. So I colored it like, I tried to remember what it looked like. I thought it was like corn, this kind of corn flower blue and white. So I tried to color it those colors. But anyway, um, yeah, whole bunch of food there. It's just, you know, fun to have these things. There's a couple of hats I colored. Bye, Ange. Clothing. And like I said, there's a couple of other food items that I, but you can, uh, you know, if I was going to use wet medium on this, I would use dr very dry acrylic paint without any water. Let's just test that out here. Let's do this radish. Let's get some red here and just test this out, you know, because there's, you know, if you don't put any water in it, it shouldn't go through. Let's get a brush. Because um, I don't know if Darcy's still here, but she was asking about it. Let me get a little flat brush here. Okay. All right, so let's see. Let's color this little radish in. We'll color it with acrylic paint, then we'll go over it with a color pencil for highlighting. Just kind of like I draw everything else with acrylic. I'm going to try that in here. No water. I'm not adding any water. Not a drop of water. Okay. So it's just kind of like a paint by number. Okay, so there's the radish. Now we're going to let that radish dry. Then we're going to go over it with color pencil. Oh, I still have some corny rare ca casserole dishes too, Eileen. The little flat ones, the little lids on them. Oh, yeah, I still have those. I have a couple of the cornflower ones, and then I have another, some other kind of flower one. Okay, so now... Okay, now let's get a, a couple of... cut. Let's get a... A white, maybe a cream. Oh, well, let's just, I just want to test it. Just, you know, do it in the book. Oh, let's make sure it didn't go through. Nope, didn't go through at all. Darcy. All right, here we go. All right, so let's do a little highlight. A little radish-ish. You know how they have, they're kind of white on the bottom. I'm just going to kind of try to color like that. So there we go. I'll try to hold it up while I color a second. So you can, because you know, if you're using, now this is craft paint that's matte. Okay, no, sh no shine, no satin, no gloss. Because your color pencils are not going to go over it like this. If you use, you know, shiny paint. 
So yeah, so you can color with your uh, acrylic paints. As long as you don't put water, I'd, I'd be real leery of putting any water in there because uh, then you, it might soak through. But if you're just, uh, hey Colleen, but if you're just going to uh, put a flat acrylic paint with no water, then it doesn't go through. We're just talking about coloring and coloring books, uh, uh, Colleen, and how to use them. Like here's, I cut these fish out of a, one of, uh, where is it? Which book was it? Where is it? Ooh. This nature scapes. And cut them out. And now I can use them in an art journal. See? So there's that, guys. There's that. Let me go back to that radish. Okay. See that awesome? It gives you a, uh, you know, with the acrylic paint. Okay. And then these are just with color pencil and a little. I did use a little black marker, a uh, black pen. You know, a little, uh, just a Sharpie pen right in the little lines there to kind of extra define some of that with just a Sharpie pen. But don't use markers. <laughs> a Sharpie marker is going to go right through this. Same thing on this, on these little pea pods. See the black, like, kind of defining around the pea pods? That is a Sharpie pen. But, you know, you can't get in there and just scrub, 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 scrub with even a Sharpie pen, it'll go through. You know, just test it, whatever book you're using, because every book is different, you know. Whatever book you're using, just go in the back page somewhere and test whatever you want to use, whether it be acrylic paints, neo colors, you know, the kids' watercolors, whatever. There's a Barnes & Noble within walking distance of the college. So I could take a stroll. Yeah, well, these right here, Darcy, I think I showed this before. I don't, well, maybe it was you were here. But these right here, they have them all the time. Six, five ninety nine, six ninety eight, dollars And they're a good size. You know, and look. Look at those awesome. I think those are poppies. Those would be awesome to color. And you can, like I said, color them with, um, uh, this is pretty heavy. You might be able to do neo colors with this. You know, you could probably do neo colors, but where's my uh, steampunk one? Let's look at that again. Where I colored this. These were my sample pages that I did on the uh, color book and uh, clip art show a couple weeks ago. And the purple from the neo colors I think that was from the neo colors came through a little bit now if you have a double-sided page that would bother me because you know unless you could well you know I guess you could maybe cover it depending on where it landed so you don't want to use this right here was the kids watercolor set and it didn't go through, but it does kind of wrinkle the paper a little bit, okay? Markers, this is just even the cheap Crayola markers went right through. Which it doesn't matter so much if, like I said, if you have a single-sided page. But if you have a double-sided page like this, you don't want it to go through. So your options are, if you want to use the wet medium to copy it and then color it, or not use something that's going to go through, okay? See my little fish here, these are just little uh, you know, color pencil. Yeah, yeah, well the Neo Colors, it, and again, this is thick, so it may not go through. Let's test it for you, Darcy. This is one of the thicker ones. Let me get my Neo Colors. Get a red here. Where's my? 
And it's also probably going to depend on how much water you use, too. If you squeeze out a lot of water and you start saturating your paper, it's going to get it thin. The thinner, you know, if you get your paper real thin, it's going to bleed through. Whereas if you just say, um, you know, just do, let's see, uh, it, it's, not even, it's not very dark. It depends on how dark you want it. Now I didn't put, I didn't squeeze any water out. That was just what's on the tip of the brush. You know, I can see how it could go through. It's not right there, but I can feel the dampness. So if you started coloring a lot on there, it's probably going to go through. I think what I would probably rather do, just me personally, is, um, let me clean this off, uh, clean this, is to use acrylic paint, like here I got this red left over from the uh, little radish. Let's find a brush here. Just had one sitting here. Well, let me get another one. That's too little. Oh, sorry guys, bumped it. I have to go under the tripod stick when I reach over to the shell. And when I do that, invariably, I hit it with my head. I think that might be a little big. Let's see. I'm trying to find, I don't know what I did, but I just bought a new set of small angle brushes. I'm just going to find where I put them. Did I put them in here? Let's see. This is a small flat. We'll go with that. Okay. So, now I always get my brush wet, but I damp it off on a paper towel till it's pretty much 100%. You know, you can feel the, just the smallest amount of, just so it bends. Okay, but the bristles got a little bit of water in them. You want the flower book. Yeah, this, it's, they're really good. You know, I don't know over in UK what kind of uh, type Barnes and Noble type stores uh, you have. Okay, so now I'm just going to go in here on this poppy and uh, I'm not putting any water in it and I'm just kind of use trying to use as much of the paint, you know, making it, dragging it out as much as I can. and. With red and you know, I'm sure lime green and some of the others are translucent. Now you may be able to add a tiny bit of water, but you better test it, you know, to be very, very sure if you don't want it to go through. Or like I said, make a copy of it before you, um, you know, then color it on a piece of cardstock or whatever kind of paper. So I'm going to go ahead and do this now. I'm just keeping a damp brush, but there's it's you know no excess water in it. And I'm just going over, and I can still see the black shaded lines that were there printed. See, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here with some white or some orange. You know, poppies kind of have a little bit of that orange tinge to them and and a uh, highlight with the uh, color pencil and this to me is just very therapeutic it is very relaxing you know it's just something you can do while you're watching somebody else stream or while you're watching TV or you know depends on if you like to sketch or draw even if you had a sketchbook right next to you and, and drew these things to practice drawing. Because like I said, your eye-hand coordination practice doesn't matter what you're practicing on. And I could be just coloring it like this, you know. But I, I just enjoy going over each petal one by one. <laughs> it's just, you know, more... Hey Mac, anybody else popping in? We're just talking a little bit about some color books today. And then, and using what you color. So, you know, after I colored all these poppies, then I could copy them and cut them out. Or if you want to make sure that your 
you know, colors are more accurate to what you you know you're painting or whatever, then you could you know copy it and then color it with your uh, paints, and you wouldn't have to worry about whether it went through or not, especially if you did it on cardstock. But then the idea is then to cut them out and use them in your collage or art journal or whatever you play with, you know, whatever kind of art journal book you use. And that's why you see all those little fish here. These are ones I colored earlier and just fussy cut out. All right, so we got one flower there. Just do one for now, okay? And I, I have, uh, you know, different books sitting around like my art journal, my, I know I'm going to say it wrong, Dean, no, it's not, it's Dina, there's Dina Wakely and Dina Reevely, anyway. <laughs> I always get them mixed up. The one that made this book. <laughs> and I keep these kind of things handy here. Like this orange I just had left over, you know, whatever. This is just the leftover. And then what I'll do is after I've glued and stay and just whatever, then I'll go back in here and, you know, play more with making these pages more stories. Okay. Alright, so let's dry this and then use some color pencil on it. I just smeared it, it's not dry. Okay. Sorry guys, I bumped the camera there. All right, let me get some of this wet paint off me. Uh, okay, so now maybe some, uh, like I said, a little bit of uh, orangey red. Let's find orangey red. Orangey red. Let's see if that'll show up even. No, nope, it's going to have to be a little bit more orange. Um, and then my, where's my white? Got too many books right here. Um, okay, here's one. <clears throat> All right, let's see if this shows up a little. Yeah, okay. Let me hold it up so you can see it. It's kind of very light, but see how it just gives it a little bit more petal shape? I think you can see that. Let's try another one here. So I'm just going right over the acrylic paint enhancing each of the little areas of the petal like this see how it just kind of makes it pop a little. Now I haven't even added any white yet. And you could be doing this part with another acrylic paint. You could go in there with an acrylic paint too. But I'm just trying to show you some different ways to color. <laughs> okay, so see how that kind of made that poppy? Then you can go in here and just maybe on some of the edges there. Or if that's too stark, you could go put this in and kind of go back over it with your lighter color just to knock back the whiteness a little bit. Something like that. I 
and again go back over it with the coral color here. So, yeah. But I started with the base coat of red um, acrylic. Yeah, I'm recording, Lynn. All right. So let me go ahead and just kind of go ahead and add some of the I'm just going with a little bit of white and then I'm going back up because the white looked a little too stark but then I'm just going to go back over the white with the coral so it just knocks the uh, white back a little but you, it still is brighter than just the coral without the white under it. Okay. Does so that we're talking about the other day? Um, the polychrome, I tried the polychrome. The other ones I haven't bought any. I, ha I haven't ordered any. The Luminaire, the Caran d'Ache, or Caran d'Ache, however, you know, the same people that make Neo Color, Neo Color crayons. Yeah, I haven't bought any yet. I have to order them from Blick because my Blick, my Blick here is small and they don't carry them in house. I have to go, I have to order them. So I'm just going back over where I want a little bit more. Like right on the slots, the fold over. It'd be a little bit brighter. Like that, maybe. And then just knock it back. Some of the edges there. I want to try them though, but you know, uh, I'll have to order them and I don't want to just order one pencil for five bucks and pay ten dollars in shipping. They do have free shipping and stuff like when you order, I don't know, a hundred dollars, something like that. Yeah, you can probably find some reviews on it, uh, Mac, online. Um, what's her name? Lisa, let me see what I don't want to say the wrong thing. She did some color pencil reviews. Let me see if I can find her real quick. Um, LaCree Fine Art. L-A-C-H-R-I. Fine Art on YouTube. Look her up. Okay, She does some pencil reviews. I bought five of those and they are gorgeous. The uh, Karen Dosh ones, the, the Lumineer, Lumines, it's either Lumineer, Lumines by Karen Dosh color pencils. Now, Karen Dosh has two different, there's the, I think it's uh, Pablo, like probably named after Pablo Picasso, Pablo brand of color pencils, and then they have the Lumines, or I think it's Luminet less. So. Thanks, Mac. Okay, so there we go. Um, you know, if you want a little bit more orange to them, you know, we could add a little bit of yellow ochre. Let's see. This might, that's going to be, well, it's not, it's going to be a little brighter than yellow ochre, but it might still give that little bit of orange tinge that poppies seem to have. So again, if you copied this, you could cut it out, or you could make a copy and then color it, and then use it in your art journal. Like I'm going to use these little fish. 
so there we go. Might have made it too yellow, but you get the idea. You get the idea. That's going over red acrylic paint with very little, hardly any, just the brush is damp, you know. Just very, very little. And I forget what color the inside of poppies. Are they yellow? I don't even, I'd have to look one up. But anyway, you get the idea. Okay. Takes coloring to a whole new level. <laughs> I try to, Darcy. But, all right, so here's the thing. Now let me move all these out of the way. Let me move all the color books. And again, this is the one, this Nature Scapes, is the one that I cut these little fish out of. Okay, I just colored a page. And again, I liked, I picked this one specifically for cutting up. That the images, like here's a, a, some peacocks. See how you can see how you can easily cut them out? Some uh, meerkats. Some lizards. You see how you can easily cut each one out? That's why I particularly liked this book. There's lots of the same image that you can cut out. Butterflies, parrots, uh, you know, just there's some hummingbirds passing by the flamingos. <laughs> and even if you just want to, if, even if you kept them connected like this, you could cut them out and just disregard the sky. So you could, you could, let's see, maybe we should do something. Um, I, don't, I think I'll just use the fish because it takes a while to color, you know, it takes a while to color these. But for instance, cut these birds out and all fussy cut it out, but without the background. Okay. Like I did the fish. So maybe I'll do something with that in this book. That's why I bought this book and the, and this book just to play with uh, different ways to um, use some of these color book because they're all so awesome and they're just sitting in your book. <laughs> all right, so let's see what we can do real quick with that. Actually, I could just use this because it's like the right colors. Let's just see right here. Now, I don't really particularly like with the ones like with the blue coral. That doesn't really go for me, you know. Not that it has to, but I would like more like want to use these fish. Um, just the ones without. You see, though, look look how awesome that looks. I think I'd want to do a little bit more background, maybe some stars or something up here where they could kind of be flying in the sky. But just look. Look how cool that looks. These are just colored with color pencil. Okay, so let's do that. Let's see what we can just play a little bit here in my, uh, okay. Diane Reevely book, and it's Dina Wakely. Am I right? Dina Wakely, Di I should write that in here. So yeah, this has just got all kinds of stuff for me to play. Some things are glued down. Some are just tacked down with a glue stick until I get to them. But this is the smack and drag book where I smack and dragged, smack and dragon, uh, all the backgrounds on every single page. I smack and dragon <laughs> with the uh, Dilutions inks. Every single page in this book. We did it one day. There's our little steampunk steampunk frog and steampunk little uh, bird. <laughs> okay, let me go back and find that purple page again. Purple and orange. Here. Okay, so let's just see what we can do with this. Let me get uh, some black paint. And you can see that I put some stencils. This is just a cut out of a flower. Okay, you like this? I would, uh, you would like this idea because you like to glue book, pack or die, you like to collage, you know. And I'm just trying to show everybody that if you have these color books, you know, make you a copy of a bit, even just the bits, even just a couple. 
of things that you might want to use on a page. All right, let me move some of this out of the way. Get a bigger brush. If I just use, you know what, let me just get a baby wipe. We'll just go with the baby wipe here for a brush. All right, my black paint. Let's just see what we can do here. I'm just, right now, I'm just trying to knock back that edge. And just kind of uh, fog it up a little. We'll just play in the art journal for a little bit. Mm -hmm. so what I'm basically trying to do here is make us a home trying to make a home for some of these fish. Now I don't want to get too much black going over the edges there. Let me just kind of lift that up. You really should put some wax paper or even a, you know, just a piece of cardstock or something behind your page. So if you want to go all the way, especially if you're using matte medium or glue. You don't want to glue your pages together accidentally. I want this to visually come this way a little more. You like this hat, Mac? I'm just kind of rubbing it in so it kind of makes it look like it's been on this page for a while. And these pages are thick. They can take the punishment in this, you know, whereas if you do it in like, uh, well, even this book that I bought to play in, you, you can't be doing all this. You can't be, to, be doing all this rubbing and, you know, um, without ripping into the page. It's darker down here because so I'm going to put some stars. Baby white flowers sound awesome. Ooh, I haven't uh, seen whatever y'all are talking about. I must have missed some, some stream or something. Baby white flowers. Oh no, I don't need another project. All right, so I'm kind of liking that. Maybe a little bit more up here, just a little touch right up in here. Just to give it a little balance there. So you can do this kind of thing with the baby wipe and just kind of make it smoky and kind of foggy. You can take a uh, palette knife and you can make some cool you know textury stuff and if you get if it gets too much although I like that right there but if it gets while it's wet you know blend it out a little bit if you don't like too much texture I like lots of stuff going on so basically what I'm doing is on the edges is just making some um, it would almost be the opposite of uh, splashes of waves. Uh, in other words, with white, it would look like foam on a wave. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the fish in the stars. So I want this to look space-like. So I'm just going to kind of give it a little texture like that. Maybe a little bit more right here. Let's just Okay, and then I think what I'll do is I'll take... A fluffy brush. When I say fluffy, I just mean something that has a lot of loose uh, hair, and then you know, get a big blob of it like this. Lots of water. And just let's do a little bit of splattering. And we're gonna dry this, and we're gonna do some stars, and we're gonna put the fish in the stars. And I did one before uh, with fish in it, in another journal, and I think I called it keep flying upstream or something like that instead of keep not swimming upstream but fly upstream. I think I put some little uh, 
wings. I think I put some wings. We'll paint. Maybe we'll paint some wings on our uh, clownfish. All right, let me dry this now. Hey, Carol. Anybody else popping in for me today? Hi to Nico and Mac. And Anybody else popping in? 3G. Hey, Karen. Linda. And get this nice and dry. Aloha! How's it going? Oh, are you still in Hawaii? I'm sure you are. It's been a long time since I've seen you. All right, so let's. Uh, it's good to see you. Let's pick. I'm, I'm not going to use the fish that are in like this one. I could even cut him out. Let's fussy cut him out to have another one. Let's see where's my where's my. I'm going to cut him out of this coral here. We're just talking about using different th elements out of your those color books that are so popular now. And I'll keep these two that are blue and this other one that's in the green for something else. Okay, and I'm just going to use these. So what I want to do is kind of decide where I want them to be. Now I have some going one way and some going the other. So let's see if they're swimming in uh, some kind of a school. Some can be going this way, some can go, be going this way. Know what I mean, Vern? Maybe just even have one just kind of sitting there. There's two together on there. Let's see. I think I'll go with that. And like I said, I think I might paint some little wings on them. All right, so this one's going going against, or you could say this could be going against the flow. <laughs> Go against the stream. This one fish. Well, this one's kind of just there, but this other one is kind of going against the grain, you know, instead of going with the flow. But you could read whatever you want into this. <laughs> okay, now, I would suggest... If you've already colored and cut out these things, no matter what kind of medium you use, whether it be you know your neo colors, your watercolors, your markers, your color pencils, acrylic paint, whatever, uh, for me, I'm just going to glue them down with Eileen's Tacky. Okay, I'm not going to matte medium over this. I'm not going to you know, but you have to play with it. You know, see what's going to work for you. If uh, depending on what stage uh, your art journal page is in. But I'm just going to, and I like things glued down well, so I always make sure that the glue goes all the way to the edge of whatever. And then it'll just look like it's part of the page. You know, and depending on what you got, what, you know, whatever kind of paper you're gluing it to and all that, I want it to uh, be nice and flat. I don't want anything curling up. Swim with your own current. That's good, Packer Die. So that one right there, that little guy, you know. 
And, uh, you know, Eileen's tacky or any kind of this, you know, Elmer's, for goodness sake. Just make sure you smooth it out all the way to the edge. And never, if you're gluing something down, I'll show you on the next one here. When you put glue on and you want to glue something, don't just like roll it out and like leave it like that. Well, you can't see. Don't leave it like that because you're, you'll get bumps. You'll get lumps and bumps on your little thin papers. Always smooth it out. And that's another thing I like about Aline's tack. You can just roll it right off your hand. All right, so we're just going to glue this in here. I'll put some stars and whatever. Yeah. So it's just a way to use your color books. There we go. And I always keep my uh, tacky glue in a jar. Just don't forget to put the lid back on when you're done. But if you leave it upside down in a jar, it's always ready to go. The glue is always right there. Remember to put the lid on, though, or you'll have a jar full of glue. In case you didn't know how I knew that. <laughs> All right, let me get this glue off my hands, and I'll just roll it off. Hey, Debbie. Debbie has a new video up. I haven't seen it yet. She made a book. She made a journal, but I saw that she posted a new YouTube video, but I haven't had a chance to go look at it yet. But I think links are open, Debbie, if you want to post the link to your new journal. Um, art journal, that's all I could say it is, because I haven't seen it yet. Um, journal, um, she made a journal on her newest YouTube video. So, Debbie, if you want to post that link. All right, so there we go. Even just that, you know, but I'm going to go ahead and add some stars. Um, let's see, I think I'll just maybe slash a few and make a couple shooting stars. Maybe you could we could even do some waves. Maybe some maybe I'll do a little combination of both. Let's just see what happens. All right. You know, a couple of bit a little wave action going on and then some stars. Let's go ahead first. Let me let me get a little bit of wet star action going here. <laughs> I don't care if a couple of it gets on the fish. Just, you know, kind of like that. But maybe have a couple shooting stars, like one right there. You know, a couple shooting stars. And I might put a couple waves. I don't know. I just like to play. I don't really... I don't worry about, you know, this is just for, you know, your journal to play in. It's not like, you know, I don't know. I just don't ever really get too bent out of shape about it. A couple of those little ones back there. Maybe I need one more right there. And then if I want a couple darker stars, I'll... I can uh, just add a few. And they could be bubbles, they could be stars, they could be, you know, whatever your imagination. That. Now let's see, let's do maybe a couple of, get a different brush though, I need a, now it's not long enough here, so let's see. Thanks, Debbie. Yeah, um, I'm glad you came in because it reminded me to watch it. So, you know, it can have some waves.
Have some coming from behind the flower there. But my point was to show you to use, like I'm using the fish. I think I want a little more orange down in there. Do I still have some orange sitting here? No, I don't think it's all dry from earlier. A little bit more orange. Down in these waves here. Look, I think that's coral. I think that's coral. Orange. Um, here we go. Um, I'm going to, I don't know if you saw Darcy, I am, I did buy some new folders to revisit the uh, 12 week project with the file folders. Oh, I don't know, maybe y'all are talking about something else. But I did buy some today. Because when I showed the project from the other day, the rubber band book, this one. Everybody wanted me to do this again. But this was a year-long project with 12 months. If I did it again, I would do it in 12 weeks. One a week instead of one a month. So I bought some file folders today. So I, I got to think about it, though. I got I to gotta a little, little bit of planning for something like that. All right. Because I don't want it to be exactly the same. You know, I want it to be a little different. I think this needs to be have some black down in there still. I want this to be black down there. I want this to be... It's going to look a little... Uh, it's going to start looking angry if I'm not careful. You know, it's going to look like an angry ocean. And I really didn't want that. I wanted it to be just the color here, but not necessarily like a raging sea, you know, or something like that. So I'm going to do this, and I'll put some white back on it. Okay, so you did see, okay. All right, let's go back with a little bit of white. Maybe just a little bit of streak here. But not look, make it look. Show Debbie my alphabetica. Oh, good grief. Where is it? Um, did Debbie start at the Alphabetica? She may want to keep going with the file folders. I could just add folders. Okay, I'm, I, I missed something. Now, if y'all are talking about Debbie's video, I di haven't seen it yet. So I don't know what she's working on. Um, it, you have to be a little more, let me know, because I haven't seen her video yet. She's wanting to expand something with the file folders. I got that. Made some, and stood them up in the Michael's bottom Yeah, okay, well, it's up on the top shelf. Let me get a, I have to get a chair to get it down. Okay, so let me show you this first. I think that's good. I'm liking that. This is making it look a little um, angry waves kind of thing. So I'm not sure I'm loving the emotion of that, but <laughs> it's a 
okay, I guess. It shows you, you know, this, it, to me it reminds me of like a, a planet flying through space, you know, on fire or something. Just, you know, purple. But, okay, let's see. She collaged some file folders and they look great. Well, I can't really show you a picture, Deb Debbie. I'll get it down. I can't really show you a picture because it's like a hundred file folders. You know, I can't show you a picture of it. I'll just bring it down. It's no biggie. So there we go. But I did want to show you guys this. These fish are just from one of those color books. So you can either color and cut them out as they are or make a copy and, of, you know, certain areas of just like the fish or whatever. So, yeah. See, I see a castle here, too. Like, a, you know, you know how in a fish tank, in a fish tank they have uh, those little castles? If you look at this, can y'all see that castle in that? Let's see if I can kind of maybe sketch it out. Let's see. Can y'all kind of see a castle in there? Like, here's the windows. Can you kind of, well, can y'all visual, oh, I hope this isn't blue. No, it's not. I hope y'all can kind of visualize this with me here. Look, here's a little tower, a little turret right there. And some more windows right here. Now there's something popping up over here. Yeah. Yeah, watch the rest of the show this today, uh, Debbie, and you'll see all the different uh, color books. And I also have another video recorded called Color Books and Clip Art. All right, so can you all kind of see where we're going here? Can you all see that castle? <laughs> I can see it. I don't know if y'all can. There's part of a... You can. Okay, good. Just kind of an indication back there of something. You know, just kind of leave it like that because it's underwater or in space. <laughs> and it's kind of like just in there. Okay, let me go and stop this and I'll show you the Alphabetica. But anyway, this is just in the uh, da Dina? No, Diane Reevely <laughs> book. But yeah, that the little fish just came out of um, the book. There's the book, book, book. This one, the one from a uh, Hobby Lobby, and I just there was a page of little clownfish in coral. They were like in coral, like this. And the ones that weren't like covered with coral are the ones that I cut out and used, even though I did go ahead and color all these. Okay, it's just this nature scapes and it's from Hobby Lobby. It's only $5.99 and you can use 40% off coupons at Hobby Lobby on books. All right, so real quick, let me, uh, let me get my little chair over here. All right, it's heavy. Hang on. All right. So my alphabetica, let me back up the camera. Hang on. I'm going to move the camera like it's not already moving. I'll heighten it up. All right, hang on, guys. Because this is tall. All right. So what this is, <laughs> Alphabetica was a project we did a, a couple, two, three years ago. 
And the box itself is just an old, it doesn't matter what box you use. I just happened to use one of the shipping boxes somebody mailed me something in. Covered it with scrapbook paper. It's just one of those, you know, priority boxes somebody mailed me, something to me in. This is holding all the file folders. Okay, this is why I can not take a picture, Debbie. <laughs> Alright, so all the file folders were created to hold different items that if you either want to just collect or keep for collage or ideas or oh now I'm real, my mouth really close to that camera and <laughs> probably sounds like I'm yelling. And uh, one section I made to be able to remove. Let's see if I can get the end of it here. So it's a book. Okay. The book is actually made out of another shipping box covered with scrapbook paper. And it's getting pretty beat up because I've used and used and used it. But again, you can start with something like this. You don't even need this much to start with. But every, we started with, it's alphabetica because you have a folder for every letter of the alphabet and then, or a tab, a, 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 a divider. A divider for every letter of the alphabet and then behind every letter of the alphabet you have a folder to collect different things like we did here's one for bells we have bells butterflies and I would give everybody a few hints <laughs> to get them started like maps we did maps I'll tell you some of the other topics but I just those were just kind of like starters to get you going on collecting things that you like to collect it does, it's just whatever things that you like. Like if you don't like butterflies, then you wouldn't make a butterfly folder. You might make a bird folder. Um, and you would collect, you would decorate the folder. Let me find one here that's uh, really completely decorated. Because um, I have all different kinds of ways to decorate, like this one. Let's see. Uh, oh, here's the map one. We'll pull the map one out. Okay, so here's the map folder. Okay, so the folder is decorated with all kinds of map things. But then you collect all kinds of things on maps. It could be, you know, just a cutout. It could be full maps. It could be things you found online. But you would, this is, this would be where you would collect your, um, your mappage. Okay then it's either you can either use it for your collage your inspiration your uh, references like you know your reference material whatever so basically it's just a, a filing system that's decorated with things that you like to use and I mean I've got a whole box here it could be you know it could go forever then we also did colors in here. So you'd have a file folder for, you know, red, yellow, blue, green, you know, your main colors, okay? And for that, we used tabs from, hang on, I got too many. For that, we used tabs made from chip, paint chips. Let me see where I can find, where is it? Where is it? And we also had these folders, this one, yeah, that had all the different, this is a separate kind of folder, uh, but I'm looking for, oh, here we go, colors. Okay, so under colors, we had, well, where are they all? I just saw them when I lifted it off the shelf. But anyway, with all, every um, color, we used like a paint chip like the variegated paint chips. Why can't I find that? I saw it when I took it down. The paint chips. Is it, oh, here it is. It's in this thing. Okay. See, I knew I saw it. So, like, this would be the paint chip for that color. You would just use, like, here's lime green. So that way, if you like Packer Dye likes to collect things by color family, if you're that more inclined to keep things organized by color rather than by 
um, item or alphabetically, then you could keep it by color with a, a file folder. You saw, yeah, here it is. You can, or you could keep a either use a file folder or just cut a divider to file uh, by color. And we just use paint chips. And then this is one of the little sample, you know, that comes at the paint chip aisle. They might have a little flower or something that's there, like I don't know, berries or something like that. So, but you can see the paint chips. That's the that makes the tab. Okay, so that's how we did the colors. What else is in here? Okay, we had clocks and watches, uh, trees, maps, music. Uh, what else? And you just decorate your file folders based on whatever it is. This one was flowers that we just did some stenciling on there. Uh, what else? Just all kinds of doors, doors, and you could even put in. This is a um, what do you call it? You know, uh, envelope. So that if you have tinier little pieces, you could put them in the envelope. It's just basically an alphabetica. It's an, a way to alphabetize your collage or just images, references, images if you want to use them for collage, for reference, for whatever. But it's just a cool, pretty way to file those. So... And uh, I'm thinking what else we had here. What was this one? I don't remember what this one was. Shoes, maybe. Um, this one was leaves. And see, we just decorate, decorate them all up. Um, but I have all kinds of other things in here. I have all kinds of other file folder projects. Um, this was a file folder that we, uh, one of those pretty ones that we folded up. Frida is in there. <laughs> this is when we went to the High Museum. She was there. I mean, not her, but a, a Frida exhibit. I have that saved in there. Um, birds. Birds and bugs, I think, was that one. But you could also use, like, I have these pretty Heidi swap folders. So you can actually just use pretty file folders that you purchase, you know, that are already decorated, like these Heidi Swap ones, you know. You can use that. Um, make your own out of scrapbook paper. Here's one, you know, a scrapbook paper. Here's, this one was all architecture. So, just, I think you get the idea. Then I have tons of ones with post-it notes all over it so it's just a way to basically keep your collection of images either by color or by alphabet uh, in a file folder a decorative file folder system I'll probably never get this back here <laughs> I have my book here that And we had a lot of fun with it. I mean, we did it for months. We did it for months of different... <laughs> but if I ever... You know, if you run out of inspiration, you can always go to your Alphabetica. <laughs> You're welcome, Debbie. I'm anxious to go see what you did with your file folders now on your uh, video. I'm anxious to see what you're doing with it. So, but this is another way. You can doesn't have to be this massive, you know. It does weigh a ton. It does weigh a ton. <laughs> All right. And for the smaller version of this file folder project, this was just file folders. This is what everybody wants me to do again. It's a it was a year long thing with file folders that pull out with different topics and different ideas and we did the small one last week 
with just leftover, and there's a video on this, this is leftover art journal pages, including covering a chipboard, and it's all held in with rubber bands. But this is all leftover journal pages, and basically, you know, they'll uh, flap out too. So, and it's just made with leftover journal pages, a little bit of chipboard and rubber bands. So there's another little sample, little thing you can do. All right, guys, well, I'm going to head out. I hope y'all enjoyed, uh, let me pull that art journal page back out here. Put this back up on the shelf. So use your color book images to cut out and use, um, color them and cut them out and use them in other journals. Mine will have 13 files just to sit on the corner of your desk, but may start fronts of drawer system for collage materials like you see on Pinterest. Collage material, I don't know, oh, I, well, my drawer system, I'll tell you this real quick, Debbie. I have a, um, let me take a quick picture. I have a, a tower that I store my collage stuff in. Uh, hang on one second. Let me just, just, it's easier to take a picture than move the camera. Okay, so this is my paint cart, my pen and pencil cart, and this right here is my collage cart. So I have them labeled, and I'll tell you real quick how I have mine. And I've told everybody before, but you, you probably weren't around then. Um, I have them written down. I think they're in this little book. I wrote them all down so I wouldn't have to keep going back over there to look at them. Hang on, let's see where I put it. Is it in this book? I'll tell you the topics. Hmm. Okay, I'm not sure where I put the list, so I'll just I'll read it off to you from a kind of a kind of across the room. You should be able to hear me. It's not like my voice doesn't carry a mile. Oh, you saw the dot. Okay, so you already know the topics that are in it. You know, uh, clocks and mechanicals, birds and bugs and butterflies. You already know the topics. I was just going to tell you the ten topics. Um, <laughs> Moomy. <laughs> ah. I saw that stream when I, when I was cleaning. Okay, good. So you already know. Okay, well, I'll let y'all go then. Um, and, you know, go cut some color and cut. Color and cut. <laughs> okay, guys. And I think Paula probably streams at 9. I never make her late night shows, but I try to watch all her recordings. So, y'all be looking out for Paula tonight. And, um, yeah. Y'all have a good afternoon. And I will probably be streaming Monday morning, bright and early. You know. Maybe we'll do it. Maybe I'll color something else to cut out. And using this journal, something like this, because it's kind of fun. It's just a fun way to use your little elements. So, okay, all right, guys. We'll talk to you later. Have a good day. Bye. So this is one where they have stacks and stacks and stacks, right, Eileen? Stacks and stacks of color books. At uh, and uh, and Jeannie's can rest assured she's already seen all these books except the one that I just showed that I bought today. You've already seen all these genies, so. <laughs> hey, Molly. Uh, so anyway, this is, uh, they have all kinds of these for six ninety eight. And look, this is a big, thick book. I mean, with tons of awesome things to color. Uh, you know, when they get into $20, it's going to have to be something really, really awesome like this Celtic design one for me to pay 20 bucks. And this is because it's a hardback and the pages are, you know, uh, they're not, they're thicker than printer paper, okay? And the, and I just love the intricacy of Celtic knots. So I, you know, I was willing to pay $20 for this.
but I wasn't willing to pay twenty twenty two dollars for the flow one because I have all these other ones. Now if I didn't have any of these, you know, I, I might have. Yeah, they have stacks of these, don't they, 3G? And they're awesome. And again, look, if you just wanted to color, look at all those little trees. Color those, and you can cut them out like I did these little fish and use them in your art journaling. You know? So, look, jars of plants. Just, you know, they're just awesome to use... Uh, you know, for your own personal, and you know, that's kind of, that's like clip art. Clip art books are made for you to use for your own, you know, whatever. Okay, and then this one is another one that um, Colleen, with one L, has, I think she has every one of these. The 20 ways to draw a tree, a flower, a bird, and anyway, but it's not just a tree. When they have like 20 ways to draw a tree, and 44 other nifty things from nature. See, there's other things in all these books. But these are great for design ideas. If you have an art journal and you want to draw some birds or trees or acorns or leaves or snails, then these bugs, there's bugs, then these are awesome to use for inspiration to put in your art journals. Because it's, you know, I, we all love our collage, but it's also, you know, good to practice your drawing. And these kind of things, you know, you just sit out and use it in your art journal. Rather than just having it sit in your, sit in your color book, you could use some of the items that you color and, you know, and cut them out. And that's what I did here. These little clownfish, I don't know if you can see them very well. But um, I cut these little clownfish out. Let me put them on here, and then I'll hold them up under. And a little bit of the coral. The rest of the, the whole background was coral. And I did some with green coral, some with blue coral, just to play with some different color ideas here. And then I fussy cut all the little clownfish out. And now you can use them in an art journal page or whatever kind of thing, you, you know, glue book or whatever. So it's, you know, it's just another way to use the little things that you've colored in your art journal or whatever. So, hey Marie, anybody else I miss? Let me get a sip of coffee here. Thanks everybody for stopping in. So any questions on that or anything? That's pretty self-explanatory. Just using the little things that, you know, because you've colored them and you want, you know, they're so cute. You want to you want to use them in something. At least I do, you know. And then this is another one that I got from uh, Hobby Lobby. Again, it was five ninety nine. I used a forty percent off coupon, and it's a steampunk one. And uh, here's the page that I showed as an example. On I do have a recording called Color Books and Clip Art, or something like that, and how you can use your color books and clip art in other projects. Okay, so here I showed how. This was, uh, was this some, well, I forgot even what I used. Okay, this was a marker, a water-based marker, one of the Crayola kit, you know, super tip ones, um, bullet tip type markers, just the water-based Crayola ones. I used that as a background, then I went over it with some color pencil. So you can see the marker went through. Now, it doesn't matter if it goes through. I, I just put a blank sheet, you know, behind it to make sure it doesn't get on here, or you can just tear it out, you know, depending on what you want to do with it. If you want to color the whole book, just make sure you put a sheet behind the where you're using markers, because if it's just one-sided, it doesn't matter if it goes through, you know, it, it doesn't matter. And then this one I used, uh, let's see, this was, one was Neo Color and one was just the kids Okay, welcome everybody to Coffee and Art in the Afternoon. I got tricker headed. I mean, ask politely, <coughs> Eileen, um, <laughs> to stream this afternoon after Carrie. So I was just showing, and again, now I've already got a whole show on color books, so I'm not going to get too in depth. I'm just going to do a couple little test things. But I was just showing that 
if you get like this is Creative Haven brand from Hobby Lobby they're normally $5.99 well with a 40% off coupon and Hobby Lobby does take their 40% coupons on books whereas Michaels does not but I, I specifically bought this one because it's for one it's just one-sided and there's all kinds of animals flowers bees bugs fish birds all kind of things that you can cut out like I did this page these are a whole page of clownfish in coral now I just threw away the coral I didn't want but I colored all these little clownfish and then fussy cut them out and then uh, I got a new um, this is just one of those um, what is it here just the cover off Royal Lang Nickel sketchbook it was the all the sketchbooks at Hobby Lobby are forty percent off I guess through today. I guess it's been going on all week and today was the first day I got over there this week. Um, and so anyway, I got two new uh, books. This is probably about, what did I say it was? Uh, eight and a half by 11. And then this one right here is a nine by 12. And it's just sketch paper. It's nothing, you know, it's nothing fancy. But the thing I was one needed to try with this one was to use it as an art journal using different things that I cut out from the color books. Because we love our color books, but they're just going to sit in the color book. So at the very least, I thought, you know, I'd find the pages that I, like, here's a whole page of bugs. After you color it, well, it doesn't have to be after. I just, I like to actually color in the book. Okay, uh, now if it's double-sided, this, like these are, and you want to use markers or something that's going to soak through, then you might want to copy it before you um, colored it. Uh, or if you're just going to use color pencils, like mostly what I do, where's that page with the food I started, um, like this, then you could copy it and then cut fussy cut draw hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of things you're going to get better at drawing even if it's just a leaf or a tree you know your hand eye coordination is going to improve just by you know doing that so again you know the secret paris i think there's a secret new york and i think some other ones coming out too but uh, again i showed all these in much more detail on the uh, color color book show I did a while back and I don't when I'm doing this I might just want to color a shoe here you know a perfume bottle here <laughs> you know some uh, art supply or yarn things on this one sewing sewing things here I just skip around you know I color a couple teapots and uh, we actually used to have this porcelain I forget, it's a corning ware that's the cornflower design. So I colored it like I tried to remember what it looked like. I thought it was like corn, this kind of cornflower blue and white. So I tried to color it those colors. But anyway, um, yeah, a whole bunch of food there. It's just, you know, fun to have these things. There's a couple of hats I colored. Bye, Ange. Clothing. And like I said, there's a couple of other food items that I, but you can, uh, you know, if I was going to use wet medium on this, I would use dr very dry acrylic paint without any water. Let's just test that out here. Let's do this radish. Let's get some red here and just test this out, you know, because there's, you know, if you don't put any water in it, it shouldn't go through. Let's get a brush. Because um, I don't know if Darcy's still here, but she was asking about it. Let me get a little flat brush here. Okay. All right, so let's see. Let's color this little radish in. We'll color it with acrylic paint, then we'll go over it with a color pencil for highlighting. Just kind of like I draw everything else with acrylic. I'm going to try that in here. No water. I'm not adding any water. Not a drop of water. Okay. So it's just kind of like a paint by number. Okay, so there's the radish. Now we're gonna, I'm going to let that radish dry. Then we're going to go over it with color pencil. 
uh, watercolors like this. Um, you know, this type of thing as a base. And then I went in with color pencil to do the shading on top of it. So, okay, so that's that. And again, this is just that Creative Haven brand. They're at Hobby Lobby and they're, they're all their color books like this are on an end cap. Like all the way, when you walk in the store, it's like all the way to the back of the store where there's some books like on one side or the other, depending on which side your Hobby Lobby has their section of uh, books in. But it's on the back side on an end cap is where they are stocking these. Stocking. <laughs> Stock, stocking. Like where they put them. <laughs> So, okay. All right, so there's that. Then there's just all different kinds. You know, this was the Animal Kingdom one. Again, this one is double-sided. So you don't want to use markers where it will go through. But if you want to just, you know, you could either color it in the book and then copy it and cut that out, you know, or or just copy it and color it on a on a uh printer, you know, card stock or whatever you want to print it out on to use in your art journal. Okay, but it will, this one's a little thicker, but I still wouldn't trust markers to not go through. Yes, yeah, stocking the stocking magazines. <laughs> I, I wouldn't trust it not to go through with, um, but look at all those awesome fish, you know, to color, cut out, and use in an art journal. Now, you know, I'm sure those copyrighted things, you can't be, you know, copying these things and, you know, I mean, if you're just going to use it in your own art journal, which is what I'm talking about, just using it in your own art journal. But, um, yeah, you don't want to be out, you know, oh, look, you know, look at all these snakes I drew or trees or whatever. Not that any of us would do that, but, you know, so... <laughs> Girl. But anyway, this is an awesome one right here. This Animal Kingdom one. And again, I've shown, I did more in depth on that last video. This is one that I got at Barnes & Noble for $6.98. 